you know, in uh, first Corinthians, Paul tells us that nothing you ever do for the Lord is useless. And so I see every single experience, good or bad, that I've been through has prepared me for this day. And, and, and so I, you know, probably three days in, I just went and I said, God, I turn my business over to you. And um, you tell me, if you want me to close it down, I'll close it down. You want me to walk away, wow. I'll walk away. You want me on the road in a robe, I'll do it. You tell me. And, wow. and, and so for a while there, I, I really wasn't sure. I'm like, you know, um, does he want me to like be a minister? Does he want me to go and pastor? Does he, what does he want me to do? And what I got through a series of nudges is that he wants, he wants me to do two things. Um, one, to bring more faith into the business world that I've already established and yep. two, help weaponize people to have, uh, to understand authority and dominion, to understand the gifts of the spirit and to really weaponize people, um, you know, to be stronger because, you know, we're in a, we're in a world where we should be, you know, you know, trampling the, the serpent, but we're not because most Christians don't know how powerful their dominion is. And so they allow themselves to be distracted easily. They allow themselves like, think about this. Christians are so divided, right? You know, if the pastor wears mm -hmm. a Gucci belt, it's like, oh, why are you wearing a Gucci, you know? And so we're <laughs> so easily divided, but who's not divided is the enemy. For thousands of years, he's been locking arms with all these different demons, all these unclean spirits, and they have absolutely no division. So imagine if you if you had any kind of sales team or you had any kind of of army that had been in unison without any division for thousands of years, that's pretty strong. Right. And yep. so even though we have dominion, Genesis 126 and 128, we have dominion over everything that creepeth across the earth. Um, we don't know that. So if you're a foreign ambassador in wherever is Uzbekistan and you don't know your authority, then you're probably going to get killed. Right. If you're a police officer and you're you don't know that you have the authority to arrest someone or stop someone, then you're probably going to get killed. And so that's, you know, Christians are being just, you know, tossed left and right so easily and distracted so easily because they don't know their dominion. They don't know that, you know, what did God actually want us here on earth? And and so uh, I know that that's part of my mission is to help people have more authority and dominion. And, and ever since connecting with a lot of these mentors, I love that you're connected underneath the leadership, whether it's at your church or I, it sounds like mentors are there. And, and I think that that's like phenomenal, right? A great example. And that's tough to find when you're pumped, when you're excited. Yeah. And the best thing these leaders told me, I was so excited, man. I was like, my life was changed. And they were just said, just don't let anyone just like put out the fire. Like everyone's going to try to control you yep. so much that they suck all the oxygen out of everything. And I had great people as well that just pushed me out, you know, just like, and it, it just shows like how much you've been accelerated to the way that you're teaching and training. And that's why I said, it's like, man, it was this guy like a pastor. He walked away from God and then decided, Oh, I'm going to come back now. Like if anyone goes and checks out Ray Higdon's content, you're going to see that's what it'll feel like. Uh, I do want to go back, but I kind of, I want to stay on this moment of, of how what's the focus now you're you're tell me how the company shifted has anything changed i know the messaging has you have a group now where you're dropping your daily wisdom you said six days a week that you're you're dropping stuff and sharing what you're learning from the bible yeah that's probably something new obviously has anything oh, yeah. shifted in the business model um you know i just really i just really believe that you probably heard the the different prophecies of the next move of god's going to be in the marketplace and yeah, and just sure. how God's going to use these business leaders, and yeah. I truly believe that as well. I mean, look at I'm I literally took my whole men's community and made it a Jesus centered, Holy yeah. Spirit covered, God multiplied message, and that was yeah. so scary. And it's just yeah, so much breakthrough has come since. So for you, what's changed in the business model, and and maybe break it down for some of the people that don't don't know exactly what you do. Yeah. So, I mean, we work, we, we work with sales teams to help them overcome their, their roadblocks and, and help them reach new levels. And so a lot of work with network marketing, a lot of work, uh, recently I've been doing a lot of work with real estate teams, with insurance teams, with franchises, oh. um, and, but, but, you know, mainly, you know, teams. And so I once you teach biblically hard not to, 
right? I mean, once you dig into like Solomon and once you dig into Proverbs, once you, you know, dig into some of the just, just really juicy stuff, you know, Romans, uh, you know, seven and eight, when you dig into that juice, it's hard to just go back to, you know, just, you know, I, I don't know, I don't have an example, but um, it's hard to go back. And so I've just, you know, I've just been listening and, and I've been obedient and um, I do a lot of speaking events. Uh, next weekend, I'm speaking up in um, Tampa um, and they're a, a very faith heavy uh, company and they love the idea um, you know, of me mixing scripture into my regular training. Uh, three weeks ago, I was speaking at an event that had booked me prior to all of this and, <laughs> and I'm up there and I'm just like, I just, I get the nudge to, I forget which one I was sharing. I think James one, five and eight, if you lack in wisdom, ask for it, it'll be given liberally and without reproach, but you got to have faith. Right. And, and so I was prompted to, to share that. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I didn't have permission to do that. And, and I don't know if they're faith based and I came off and the CEO has one of the most amazing salvation stories I've ever heard. And he was so happy that I shared it. Wow. And so I've just been listening, you know, I've been listening. And, and so, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, pretty bold about it. I mean, it's all over my, my social media. And, you know, some people have told me, Hey, I can't follow you anymore. I'm like, Hey, no judgment. I got you. I, I hear you rooting for you. Um, and, but a lot more people have been turned on. Not that that's the reason I'm doing it, but, um, <clears throat> I love it. And, and so I'm mixing it into literally everything that I do. I'm not making it. It's not like it's the sole focus except for my faith group, my faith group I've started, and that's obviously all faith. I keep it very specific there. Um, but in all of my other things, I'm mixing scripture in, you know, so like we run a six week, um, boot camp, I guess, called Top Earner Success School. And every session I had, you know, one slide that was, you know, three to four different verses that I thought were pertinent and powerful. And so I'm just mixing it into everything that I'm, that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, and that, and that's, you know, that's a balance. Cause a lot of times I want to go like heavy, hardcore, you know, translation kind of stuff. And, but I got, I got to balance it of, okay, is this going to serve them? Cause I, I, you know, the number one rule of teaching is don't confuse. And so I got to keep yeah. it, you know, keep it to where it's easy to consume and, and, and so, but, but still bold in, in my faith. 